Day one of Hercules week, and what better place to start than where TFC Toys started, with the excavator appropriately named Exgraver. Now, before we begin, um, yeah, there's something weird about this toy's colors. On my camera's normal settings, it wreaks havoc on my white balance, so I can't shoot this thing the way I normally would. If the if, if the focus or anything is a little off, or if this isn't as high quality as usual, I do apologize. I will try to fix it for the next review. For now, though, I am kind of stuck. But hopefully will not diminish your experience watching this. Getting back to the toy itself, you might also call this vehicle a mechanical shovel, a track hoe, or if you live in the UK, a rubber duck. I'm not sure why. No matter what you call it, it is a big block of a construction vehicle comprised mostly of lime green plastic as well as some gunmetal gray, with some purple accents showing through from exposed plastic, especially here on the top, and a big hunk of it there in the rear, closing up that uh, rear piece. It is very much... Uh, reminiscent of G1 Constructicons in its colors. And I don't know how it looks on camera right now, since I have to use weird settings, but in person, uh, it is just a shade off of being irritating lime green. So they picked a very nice shade of plastic to cast this toy in. You can see it's been broken up quite a bit by a lot of silver paint apps. Most uh, noticeably is the diamond plate that is not only painted but molded into the top, which does look quite cool. You got a few other little details shining through, including the black there on the cab section's windows. And the same silver can be seen running through all the lines and cables in the shovel arm. This is, of course, the main feature of the toy where most of the gimmick takes place. You've got three points of articulation on it. Four if you count the fact that it pegs in so it can actually swivel. There is some limited range to it because it will hit the cab if it moves over to this side, but you do get the option of moving it around that way as well. The hinges start here and move up here, this, I guess, elbow point, and here in the shovel, the scoop itself. You can also see that all of these joints have fake hydraulics, something we saw the first time in Masterpiece Convoy. It adds a really nice effect. It's such a simple design element, but it really adds a lot of character to the vehicle mode. Now, you can also move this one as well. However, mine is an early release uh, X-Graver, and on the early releases, that joint was so tight, it was actually prone to breaking, which, unfortunately, mine ended up doing. Now, replacements were made available, and later ones were fixed before being released. However, I could not procure a fixed shovel in time for this review, so I apologize for not being able to demonstrate it properly. Now, while the vehicle mode is solid, it is very simplistic in design. It does not have nearly as many angles or molded details as the later Hercules toys. There's also a few things that have simplified the design. For instance, the exposed robot mode fists, one of which is very easy to see. And, of course, the... Uh, the treads do not turn independently from the top section because of how the toy transforms, as you can see by the huge hinge there taking up the front. But this toy does have some extra features that do make the vehicle mode worthwhile. For instance, this piece, the cab, is actually pegged on, so you can do pretty much anything you want with it. In particular, if you want the cab over here, easy to do. If you, want to, if you think it looks better that way, you know, whatever. You can mount it up here if you want. You can mount it up here, you know, whatever. There's actually a lot of connection points where you can do pretty much anything you want with the toy. So the extra versatility is very much appreciated. It really shines through. You also have these. A couple extra gun accessories. It's the exact same mold, though one is traditional purple and the other translucent red. This adds some nice bit of firepower to Xgraver's vehicle mode. If, you know, of course, you run to a construction site that is in need of heavy artillery, you have that option. And I really do like all the little options that you have on this vehicle. Now, while it can't rotate over the treads, it does roll. 
Though, because of the way it transforms, the treads do tend to uh, do, do tend to split a little bit, which does limit the rolling you can do. And it really doesn't roll that smoothly on mine. That's a mileage may vary thing. It's just little tiny uh, plastic wheels here. I just have one that gets stuck. I don't know if that's mine or if that's a universal problem. But still, very solid vehicle, very nice way of getting started. And of course, we're just getting started. Time to go to robot. In robot mode, X-Graver hits me in all the right aesthetic spots. This is the kind of styling I missed when we went on to movie toys for so long. These big block pieces, you know, this efficient, clean transformation. A robot made of solid parts that actually look, well, solid. In that sense, he very much reminds me of an Energon or Cybertron style toy. He does have that kind of aesthetic to him. And I love him for it. Let's look a little bit deeper. Of course, we've exposed a lot more purple. It's a much more prominent color here. And as you can see, extremely clean transformation. Yeah, his shovel arm is off. However, there is reason for that that we will get to. We're looking at design details for now. And you can see there's a lot of little details added to him. Some extra silver breaking up the purple parts, as well as some black paint that we didn't get to see before. With some, over, with some uh, paint apps that overlap to the top and front of the shoulder, which I actually think makes it look really cool. You've got some extra paint apps here, the silver on the pipes for his abdomens, some on the midsection, and, well, nothing you can really do about the legs. Of course, that's you know fairly typical of a construction vehicle that turns into a robot. In fact, Transformers does it a lot, as you can see in this toy, which in no way has any relation to the TFC toy X-Graver. As you can see, he does share the treads for the legs, but otherwise they really don't have all that much in common. Though, I will admit, he does have a head sculpt that very much reminds me of Scavenger's animation model. Eh, small world, that. Articulation-wise, this guy is actually quite impressive for his blocky design. Transformation hinges still work and are still very viable articulation points. Shoulders also move forward and they open up underneath. Three hinges in each shoulder to get all the articulation you want. The biceps rotate as well, though if the arm is bent like this, it does get hindered if it's in the wrong spot. So it's rare when that happens. For the most part, they are free moving. Elbows. 90 degrees, wrists also rotate as well. The waist rotates thanks to joint and transformation. Hips are ball jointed and they do have a swivel underneath. Knees fully bend and if you need a little bit more balance, his feet do adjust. Though as you noticed, when one moves, so does the other. Still, it does help you get balance in just the right poses when you need them. I will admit one annoyance to the articulation uses floating elbows as well as floating knees, meaning that there is an absolutely huge gap when they are bent. The arms, well, they tried to minimize this, but it's still irritating. The legs did not, though they actually have a very good design reason for doing that. It's an annoyance, but the joints still hold firm. That's what's important. I will also mention the head, which is ball jointed. Though it is restricted to that much, just due to how the stem holding onto the ball joint is molded. By some strange uh, strange design, though, can look straight up. Not quite sure what he would need there, but, well, it is possible to do. Also, on all these guys, the light pipe works extremely well. Absolutely brilliant plastic to pick for that kind of effect. Now, if we talk accessories, we have to bring this back. 
Now we can mount this on the same peg hole that it had before and mount it on its back, though since mine can't fold up completely, it does make for a very strange shaped backpack. So generally I will leave this on his back and it will act as something of a tail, just so he can hold poses and be a little bit more stable. However, most would probably prefer to leave it on his arm, where it acts as an extra arm weapon. And much to my surprise, the joints are quite firm and can hold any pose that you would put him in, and as you can see, no balance issues despite the huge size to this piece. Then of course we have to bring back the cannons, which have two purposes. The first is to be mounted into the same peg holes that they had in vehicle mode. This gives him something of a exhaust pipe system, giving him a bit more of a machine look and adding some detail to his robot mode. This is a nice little storage method if you're using the shovel arm as his primary weapon. Me, I prefer to go the twin pistol route, which is a motif that pretty much all of these guys share because they all come with one standard weapon and one translucent red duplicate. And you can hardly ever complain about extra weaponry, can you? And speaking of accessories, yeah, there's this big lump of purple plastic that I pulled off of vehicle mode. This will be Hercules' right hand. And if you really want to, you can actually use the joint that held it in vehicle mode to hang on to it now, just in case you don't want to store it anywhere. However, and this is actually hard to pick up on camera, I know, but something about this gray plastic does tend to take the stress marks pretty easily uh, compared to most. Uh, it's not that big of an issue, it's not going to cause any major fractures or anything, but it is something to watch out for, and I prefer to avoid it when I can. It's just as easy to keep the fist off to the side, you're not really hurting anything. Though, if you are very clever, you can use the leftover cab here, and actually make a giant fist mode for him. That's something for you to discover on your own, because I find it quite silly, and I can't quite remember how to do it offhand. So, take my word for it. Overall, I find Xgraver a great way of starting out the Hercules series. He fills a very big void in the aesthetics market for everyone who is missing the classic Cybertron and Energon stylings. For a third-party toy, he's also surprisingly solid, comparable to official releases today. True, compared to his brethren, his transformation and design is overall simpler, but that's not really a bad thing because his execution is done so well. While his vehicle mode might have a couple of downsides to it, I really feel that the overall quality and care that went into this toy more than makes up for those minor flaws. In the end, not my absolute favorite from this series, but pretty close to the top. And to find out my favorite from the series, you're just going to have to keep watching because this whole week is going to be filled with lime green plastic. Stay tuned. Tomorrow, we continue.